Okay, we're going to do a class 2 restoration now. Now, I'm using a traditional Toffelmeyer band uh, and retainer. Um, I'm also doing it a little differently than you were taught when we were all taught in dental school, in which the, uh, the overall uh, groove for the Toffelmeyer is traditionally placed toward the gingival. Uh, my good friend Denny Brown at Greater Curve uh, uh, Matrix Bands has always recommended that you have the, the groove toward the occlusal. In that capacity, it's going to constrict the band a lot better toward the gingival and give you a better overall anatomical seal in the rest restoration that you're going to be placing. So I've placed another tip onto the Activa material and that's the enamel of the restoration. We've placed our bonding material within there and cured that according to manufacturer's instructions. We're now going to go ahead and fill this restoration. What I'm going to do is in the deepest component, in the deepest portion, I'm going to place the cannula and begin to extrude the material into the box. And keeping the cannula in the material and in the box and gently backfilling it. As we come up to the occlusal, I'm going to drag it over the pulpal floor gently, then go down into the second box, and I'm going to gently extrude it into that second area to get a fill of that box as well. Again, bringing the cannula slightly out, and then bringing it over to the cable surface area, just kind of dragging the material out that way. Now you can get rid of the excess if you would like to. And then I just like to make sure that I have everything to place. Try not to play with it too much because when you fill up the interproximal boxes the way that I just did, you're going to get a very nice seal all around. If you want to check the interproximals depending on where your band is allowing you to go, you can certainly do that. Now I'm not completely filled. I've got about oh a millimeter or two or so onto the pulpal floor and the boxes are filled just to about the contact area. Notice I'm not curing it. I'm going to wait that 20 seconds before I do. And then once that's ready, I then cure. Again, another 20 seconds under regular intensity of your LED light. Make sure also that you get into the routine of checking the output of your light on a digital radiometer that gives you an actual readout of numbers as to how what the milliwatts per centimeter squared of energy being put out on. That's going to make sure that you're actually curing properly. One of the biggest problems is that even though LED lights light up, they may not be providing you with the energy that you need to fully cure your material. As I like to call it, sometimes you're creating a Tootsie Roll pop. Hard on the outside, soft on the inside, and you're not going to really have a full thorough cure. So check your lights. It's going to be very important. Okay, so we filled the initial component of it. Now I'm going to go back in and just finish up the occlusal of the, restore, of the restoration. I'm going to keep my cannula in the material. Just fill it up. I overfill slightly so that this way I can go back in with my trimming burrs after I've completed the preparation and give myself some really nice anatomy. For your anatomy after curing, you can use whatever rotary instrumentation you would normally use for your regular composite procedures and polishing to bring out a high luster on the composite of the Activa. See, I'm just kind of bringing it all around because I'll be able to create anatomy in there after I have finished curing. Yeah, waited just a little bit, not rushing through the entire procedure, and now I'm going to go ahead and cure that. After that's cured, we'll remove the matrix band, and I'll show you how well we did in approximately, hopefully, as good as I typically try to do, of course. So we're almost done with the cure. Also make sure to keep your light directly on the restoration, and if you can possibly, Watch where your light is aimed. That's another component that's been a big problem. If some studies have shown by Richard Price that uh, up in Dalhousie University, that if you do not aim the light properly, you're not going to get a good cure. So it's important for you to consider that. I'm going to remove the matrix band from it. And in this situation, because of the rubberization of the model, 
the material came right on out. We have a very nice inner proximal contact area, nice and smooth. And then you'd be able to trim up the occlusal surface. Now people ask all the time, John, this is an injectable material that's fairly viscous, but how do you get good contacts? Well, again, contacts are going to be created by how you manipulate your band. If you do not wedge and put your band on properly and create contacts with your band and a good ball burnisher, you're never going to get good contacts. So whether you're using a traditional type of composite or an injectable type of material like Activa, you have to create your contacts in your matrix band. That's a very important first step.